my mind is still traveling, and uh, it, we had a very prosperous trip, very good trip, and thank God for it, and God gave us safety as well, a little, a little over 5,000 miles, and uh, then came home and just wide open, and uh, trying to get things ready, and sell the house and everything, and uh, mowed the church here, well, I started last night, and then this morning finished it, I mowed the back last night after prayer service, and and working at the house, I seemed like I didn't have time to breathe, but uh, thank God, God's good anyway, amen, and I just want to say that at the very beginning, appreciate Brother Caesar, uh, the messages he brought every service, were great messages, and we listened to every one of them. And uh, there was one time that we didn't hear all of it. Uh, Caesar said, I've got a feedback, turn it down. And so she turned it down, and it, we couldn't hear it at all. And then te and Wendy texted her and said, turn it up. And she turned, so we could hear it, but we had, had to put the phone to our ear. But anyway, we get all that straightened out. And uh, But uh, I do appreciate it so much. And, and then the salvation here Sunday morning, what a blessing that is. And those that will be baptized this Sunday. And uh, so we're going to have communion tonight as well, as well as we'll have communion Sunday. And then right after the service, we'll have, we eat uh, after our baptism. We have uh, sort of like finger food stuff, whatever. It usually, usually turn out to be a meal, but it be an Easter Sunday or I'd rather say Resurrection Sunday uh, that... Um, Every, people's got places to go and everything, and so we'll just have the baptism, and that'll be all. And uh, then we won't have service uh, Sunday night, uh, people being with their families and all that. And so we praise the Lord for what he's done, what he's doing. And so let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. And as we do pray, we got several requests we'd like to make known. And uh, do pray for us again as we're in the process of... Uh, God's changing our page in our ministry, and thank God for it. And but it's always hard to get up and move, Amen, or change. It's, uh, I'm not a change something. I'd rather do something and be in God's will and out of God's will. And we have found a place, uh, Lord's will. Everything we we are, we are in contract uh, place in Kentucky. Uh, we'll just be two hours from Mount Juliet. And uh, then, actually, five hours from uh, where I grew up at. And uh, he said, well, I still a long ways. Well, that's better than 18 hours uh, here. But we can drive that in one day. But anyway, um, but it would be centered in evangelistic work and uh, all. And uh, so, uh, Brother Greg told, like, you know, he'll keep me very busy. So, thank God for that. And... I thank God for being at Brother Tony Hill's church uh, on Thursday, Thursday, two Thursdays ago, I guess it was now, and the uh, name of his church is That Church, and he gave, I, we finally asked him, you know, and I ain't going to take the time to tell the reason why, but he, there's a reason it's called That Church, but I was, we were so amazed. When we got there, they was, cars was lined up out to the street. And what they do is on every Friday, well, actually they've done it today and we're doing it Friday as well, uh, they give away food. Uh, food, I, I'm talking about, um, I'm talking about, I'm not talking about just cheap stuff, uh, track and trailer loads of food and enough to last a family a week. Uh, while we was, a week before that, they on one day they gave, I forgot, two or three hundred cases of shrimp and uh, but uh, that day when we was there on Thursday was giving away food on Friday, but Thursday was giving away furniture. I'm not talking about used furniture, brand new beds, brand new mattresses, so, uh, desk, and all kinds of people was lined up. And I said, Lord, so I didn't know for sure because I couldn't get to, I didn't know where to park. And so we pulled out to the field, and uh, Sister Joy, Brother Tony's wife, man, she was she's coming after us. And Tony came and saw Texas tag. He said, "No, no, no, leave them alone. They're not breaking it. They thought we was breaking in line, you know." And uh, but we had a good service there, and thank God for that. And but it's amazing what God's doing there at that church. And um, so, 
That's a, that's a good name that you can remember. Well, where you go at that church? All right, what church? That church. And uh, so I'm going to go to that church. Amen. But anyway, we had a good time. And Brother Tony said, any time I want to come, just come. So thank God for that. But it's on down past St. Peter, Pittsburgh, uh, Virginia, um, Florida. Uh, we are looking at places where we want to end up at, but we I think we found a place, and and I thank God for it. We got, I'm going to have my own prior mountain, amen? Uh, we got three acres, and the acre of it is cleared off, and the house sits upon that, but then there's a mountain right behind it, and we got two acres of that that goes up into the mountain, and it's going to be our personal prayer mountain. I'm going to build me an altar up there and have me a place I can go and just get along with God and as well as Wendy. Wendy, I have to get her in another place. And and uh, I, I, went, I walked up there one day, was there, and, and there's a place there at rock formation. And because we thought it was a building, but it wasn't, but it's rock. And there's a hewed out, hewed out, hewed out place. Does that sound right? Hewed out and beautiful place to get in the cleft of the rock and just pray. Amen. But anyway, uh, and so we supposed to close on that uh, May the 6th. So pray that all everything will work out and we can get our place sold. That's our request is that um, a house went on the market today and pray that God will send us a buyer. First time God told us to move, uh, they, uh, I said, Lord, if you really want us to do this, then let the house sell soon. I was thinking four to five weeks, and it sold in 24 hours. And we got $70,000 more than what we gave for the house. It only lived there for two years, Brother Mike. And and then they gave us $6,000 on top of that just to, for them to tow it. So, hey, if Lord wants to do something like that, again, that's wonderful. That'd be great. And so God knows what he's doing, and uh, he, he meets every need according to his purpose and according to his will. So we do pray about that. Pray that God will help us and slow us down a little bit. And uh, I don't, I don't want to get to a place where I, I don't can have time to stay in the Word of God and pray. And um, that's more, that's more important than anything. If I don't spend at least two hours in prayer and study every day, I feel it, man. It, it affects me. And so, also tonight, I do ask that you pray for Brother uh, Pastor Locke and his wife, uh, Ty, there in Israel. He's made a couple of posts, and uh, he was at the well wall the, yesterday, And but uh, he's actually preaching in the largest church in Israel. And I, I can't, I don't remember the name of the church, but um, uh, what a privilege. And also, he's meeting with some of the high uppers. Uh, I don't know if... I don't I don't know what it all all it is, but and but he's meeting with them not not just to talk with them about Israel or whatever, but they want him to come and tell them about Jesus. And matter of fact, he's going to another country in a couple of weeks. I guess it is something like that, Wendy. I forgot where it was at now, but um, uh, after he got the invitation to come to preach, uh, the president. And the people there in that country uh, got in touch with them and said, we want you to come and come to uh, uh, meet with us and tell us about this Jesus that you're preaching. Wow. So God is opening opportunities unbelievable for Brother Greg. And so pray pray for him that God will give him strength and safety. And, uh, and he'll be going to India in June with Brother Paul. And the way he'll have to do that is, and are we on air now? Okay. I don't know if I were to say it or not. Uh, might not. Anyway, but he'll be going uh, in you, not to preach. Probably might not preach, but uh, but anyway, he'll be going, but he ain't going to stay long. And uh, he'll fly in and do his business and fly right back out. And uh, And so... Pray for Brother Paul. Talked to him yesterday. Well, I talked to him about every day here lately, but we got to see him. Uh, he came down and went to Mount Juliet. We got to be with him. You know, on the, how many saw the, the Wednesday night service where Brother Greg had Brother Paul and myself and Wendy to come down for the church to pray for us? Did y'all see that? Uh, that was a blessing. And um, Paul 
when he got went back the next day to India, and he got in, in back to India on Saturday, I guess it would be Saturday, and preached three different churches on Sunday, and they're having uh, 21 days of fast and prayer. And I mean, that man is, God is really using Brother Paul and unbelievable. And um, then uh, this Easter or this Resurrection Sunday, they're having a big special service about that. So pray for Brother Paul as well, that God will touch him as well, that God will keep him safe. And I don't know if you heard about the earthquake that India had, the northern part, Brother Paul's in the southern part, but that's where the part where they're having all the persecution. And they still, had, Paul told me yesterday, a day before yesterday, they haven't still got the number of how many was killed. And, but it, it was a, like a 5.9, huh? It was actually two, uh, two earthquakes. And I know one was in the, the Dell, um, which is a big city. I've been in, yeah, Delhi, yeah. And then part of pa uh, Pakistan. Also, Paul goes into Pakistan in that area. So they don't know the death toll, and he said he'll be going up there to help them out as well. So pray for them that God uh, would touch them. All right. I've said a lot about myself and others. Now, do you have a special request you'd like to make known? Any spoken requests? Yes, brother. For the families of, uh, of the agent that uh, in California this past week, another one that died by suicide. Yeah, let's do pray about that. Another officer committed suicide in California. And uh, pray for all of the officers, border control, and first responders. And... Uh, you know, when I worked for the fire department 15 years, they said that the average uh, people that stays with the fire department or the police department is five years, and they get burned out. I was there for 15 years, and I don't know how many times that I said, this is it. I'll never do it again. I'm, I'm quitting. But uh, I had to wait till I had a physical and emotional breakdown before I said, all right, I'm done with it. So... Anyhow, pray for them. It's a lot of burdens when you when you uh, have to deal with trauma and evil every day of your life. Um, you you may be able to shake it off, but it's still there, back back in your mind somewhere. So, uh, let's do pray for all of them. Yes, brother Bill. Pray for uh, that bridge. That, yeah, that Baltimore. Bridge yeah. Baltimore, I heard on the news earlier today that uh, was it two or three. Two or three of those construction workers that are just dead are from Mexico. Yeah. So, let's do pray. Folks, um, I'm, I'm telling you, we're fixing to hit some bad times. Um, I mean, everything has come to, I, I believe that Jesus could come before this service is over. I'll be honest with you. And that'd be wonderful. But before he does come, <laughs> Uh, yeah, we're, I'm ready to go. I'll let the trumpet blow. Amen. But before he does come, we don't know for sure all that we're going to have to go through. But America's in terrible shape right now. And things are in the work. It has been in work for years and years, but I think it's coming to a head pretty quick now. So let's pray for one another. But God's going to take care of his people. I promise you that. All right. Anyone else have a spoken request? I'll be leaving Sunday, my last Sunday over at the park, and I've had probably over 40 or 50 people come up to me over the last three Sundays and said they got more help and learned more of the Word of God than they've had in their whole life. So I'm glad that God put me over there. Yeah. And also, I'm so excited about going to Spain mm -hmm. and going through there, and uh, my daughter's excited. John is on my board is excited and I don't know I know my daughter's there but I've always wanted to go to Spain and go to the Lord and I know God's got it I feel God in it 40 miles deep and I know God's got a reason in it. Amen. and I'm excited about going to, to Spain and anywhere else God opens the door I'm excited about that Amen. Amen. Amen so about like Greg was first time I went to the Wailing Wall. I remember that my mother asked me would I put a prayer inside that Wailing Wall and pray. And boy, I took life and soul to God Almighty and praying to God up Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
And I was praying in the name of the Father, the Son, and the sweet Holy Ghost. Yeah. Hallelujah. And God just moved in. And uh, but you know what? Them them little Jews, we need to pray for them to get rid of that Hamas down that southern end of the at, at West Bank down there. Because yeah. they ain't nothing but a devil, a serpent, a slew foot. And and if they don't step out the enemy, if you don't get the sin out of your heart and your life, if you don't get the sin, if they don't get that wicked part out of that part. They, all they do is just yeah. pitch, pitch, pitch right back up and be the same way it was in just a few years. Yeah. Well, it's they're also starting to be attacked from the north too. Uh from and, uh and in the house. our country our country didn't stand with Israel, Biden backed out. And you know what? If they if if everybody all the nations of the world just continue just completely turn against Israel, that's when God's gonna show up. God ain't gonna show up when everybody's protecting them. All right. God shows up when can't nobody else. It has to be God to do it. Right. So I'm looking forward to Hallelujah. I'm excited. It's exciting. Time yeah. Exciting time to live. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, let's do de definitely pray for Israel and the peace of Israel. And we are grateful that God put Brother Mike there this year. You know, I'll be honest with you. When Mike first told me, I thought, well, that's gonna be rough, Brother Mike. I, you know, they ain't gonna because I know how it is at our park and. Uh, uh, these old people come from up north down down here to party. Yeah. Old people trying to act like they're teenagers. And uh, we had not went to one thing. We've been here there for two years, had not went to one thing. We even got a par three golf course. And I love to play golf. And in two years, I ain't even walked on the field there. I'm, I'm not, I hadn't had time to do it. But um, uh, they well, mentioned about, about me. About 80 years old come up to this Sunday, I'll tell you. This is worth telling. And I preached on the crucifixion. And of course, I used Psalms 22, Isaiah 53. I also went through John's, went through Matthew, where the tail veil rent popped the bottom. Mm -hmm. And what all this here signifies, but God, I, I, about, for about 30 minutes, wide open, as hard as I could go. And a guy came up to me after church service, sir, Sunday. He said, Mike, he says, I've heard a lot of preaching in my life, but I've never heard a message like what you preach today it ain't speaking about me i'm talking about god did you talk about studying and praying and being in the word of god two to three hours i've probably been at five and six and seven hours a day makes a difference bro. all week long if until sunday i'm talking about every day because i it, all my time has been in that book studying and preparing and i couldn't get it all out but i got every bit i could get out amen god, within the time that god that i had to give it to and and that, that man really blessed my heart. And he says, I've listened to preaching all my life, but I've never heard a message. Never heard nothing like this in my whole life. And he was probably close to 80 years old. Amen. That was a blessing for me. I God. tell you, people are hungry. If all they need to do is hear it. And uh, I do thank God for opening the door for you there. And that's that's a blessing. Amen. And I probably do. next year, too. They probably want you back next year. Won't yeah. They? yeah. Yeah, amen. They don't give me a raise. And they're going to give you a race. How about that? <laughs> amen. Woo, and so, shout, God. Amen. amen. So pray for them. Pray for uh, Mike again as he goes to Spain. And, and uh, he's, not, he's not just going there to visit his daughter, but going there to, to also get to, to work, work and do mission work yeah. there. And yeah. uh, uh, so let's pray for that. Someone else have a spoken request. All right, then by uplifted hands, we got some praises that I've been told about, and uh, people, some people got some jobs and been praying about. Thank God for that, and uh, of course the salvation here Sunday, and Amen. and uh, the four that'll be baptized, Lord's will, this coming Sunday. What a blessing that would be, and so we thank God for it. And so, brother Mike, if you wouldn't mind opening us up as we go to God in prayer. <clears throat> Lord, we humbly come to you this evening, dear God, in Jesus' name. Lord, knowing that you're God, and we know besides you there is none else. Many prayer requests have been made known from India over in Israel. Oh, God. Right here, what you're doing here. God, yes. and I heard Brother Caesar preach myself, and Lord, Lord, how you using him? And God, yes, you. thank you. God, God's man for the hour of prayer here at this place with Brother Caesar and Sister Rosie. God yes. bless them. Oh, Lord. Bless Brother Dwayne and Sister Wendy where they're heading up into Kentucky, God. I pray you bless their cellular 
place and lord let it be so easy let it be so evident that bring light when glory comes up that oh, everything just God describe, yes. everything just done and lord as we as lord as we all continue on we we might be going in different directions but we all follow the path that leads to heaven and that's going to that's following jesus and lord Amen. help us all to do you will help us all to preach in the spirit and empower the spirit of god oh and god lord grant jesus, it i pray that you fill us all up with your touch and your help because without you, God, we know we're nothing. But God, we know you said we could do all things through Christ which strengthened us. And mm -hmm. I pray tonight, Lord, that as this service begins, God, that you just be in the beginning, be in the ending. And Lord, what you do in between, Lord, you get the glory and the honor and the praise. And yes, Jesus yes. getting baptized has come to know Jesus. Oh, Lord, just God, bless yes. them. Help them to grow in the grace and knowledge. And help Brother Caesar to feed on them, feed the flock yes, of God. Father and Grant. Lord, what you do here with them, Lord, we're going to praise you and thank you. And Lord, thank you, Lord, for everything you've done for us. Lord, we ain't worthy. No, Even we're not. Call on your name. But you said if you'd call, you'd answer and show us great and mighty things, even things we don't even know. And mm. we ask you even now to prepare every day, every day that we're going to be in Spain and everywhere we'll be, every heart will be be spoken to. Oh, and throughout God, India, please. Throughout God. the Israel where Brother Greg's at and everywhere, God. I'll yes, you just yes, God, yes. You a God that can be anywhere and everywhere all at the same time and bless in any place that you Lord want to be. Lord God, And when you come through the room and when the when the when the disciples all in the room, you just appeared. You didn't have to open the door. No, nope. Thank God, you are the door. Praise yes, God. We thank, praise you, Lord. You and thank you, Lord. We that. bless you for God that. God, and direct us all. What you do, we'll thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, let's have some worship here tonight. Amen. And Amen. we'll be back in just a moment. Those online.
What if the Lord was to come right now? You know, he says in one place that he said it come as a thief in the night. I remember years ago, there's a couple, family, actually a whole family. And without getting into all the story, a little strange family, I guess you could say. But they was sort of poor and they lived in a little trailer. And they hadn't been to church in a couple of weeks. And uh, this is when I was still at Southside. So I went by to visit with them. And it's it about dark. And... When I got there, I, I heard some music. I, I don't know if it was Elvis Presley or what, but they had a little record player. They had their mother, which someone was their grandmother. It was their, one of their mothers, I think the, the mother's mother. And they had a bed for her in the living room, and they had a little small record player out in the middle of the floor, and they was all gathered around that uh, record player listening to music. I didn't even know what they was listening to. And I knocked. And they looked, and the man, he said, the preacher. That's the first thing he said. He said, the preacher. And they took that record player and threw it underneath the bed that where the lady was laying, and they scrambled around like crazy. And I'm standing here watching it all day. I don't know if they was knowing I was watching. And I thought, Lord, man, that surprised them. And he came to the Lord like, well, hey, preacher, it's good to see you. I wonder if the Lord come, if we'd have to scramble around and say, oh, Lord, do this, do that, do this. He's here. We ain't going to have time. It better, you better have it right when he comes. All right, that's not the message. You've got that, and that's free. Turn your Bibles, if you would, to the book of Psalms, chapter 37. I had another message that I, throughout the week, I, I in the motel, was studying on. I thought this is what God would have us to preach, but... Last night I came to church and tired and burdened and and normally I, it don't happen this way. I've heard people it ha has happened to me a few times, but I needed something from the Lord. I just needed something from the Lord, and I bowed down at the altar and I just opened my Bible before I prayed. I usually read some scriptures, and it was right there before me. God showed me, gave it to me. So I told Wendy tonight, I think I'm just going to preach to myself. But I needed exactly what he said here. And so this is the way we're going to go. Look in chapter 37 of Psalms. This is a Psalm of David. And I want to begin reading just a few verses in verses 3. He said, trust in the Lord and do good. So shall thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. Now notice verse 4. It's going to be my text verse. Delight thyself also in the Lord. And he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. And he shall bring it to pass. Father, in Christ's name. Lord, as you put it in me, I pray, dear God, that you help us to put it out to others. I need you, Holy Ghost, dear, dear Lord, tonight to help me to preach. Keep my mind clear and fresh and let my speech be cleared. And I pray, dear God, that you'll help us, Lord, to bring this message that you've laid upon my heart. It's been on my heart all day long. And God, I pray that you'd help us. Speak to us, we ask. In Christ's name we ask. Amen. Amen. This is one of the greatest verse I believe found in the Word of God. And again, you know, you read verses, you read some verses hundreds and even thousands of times through the years and 46 years of me reading the Bible and everything. Every once in a while, something will just, boom, it'll pop out at you that you really hadn't seen or it has really didn't touch you like it did the first several 50, 60 times you've read it. And when I got to verse 4 there on the altar, the Bible said, Delight thyself also in the Lord. And when I saw that, I took and went home and I looked the word up in the Hebrew. The word delight here is anna, 
It's A N A G, Anna, Anag, however you want to say it. But it means or used many a times as a material or a clothing, a royal clothing that someone sees. Um, how many of times have you ever seen someone, a lady that's getting married and she's got a wedding dress on and you look at her dress that she's got on and the train that's behind her and everything and you say, men don't do it as much as women, but they, oh, that's delightful. Or seeing something in your life and, and it's something that just takes your breath and you say, oh, that's delightful. I know men don't like to use the word, oh, that's delightful. It sort of sounds sissy. But you know, the Bible tells us that God delights himself in the righteous. And here the Bible said for us to delight thyself also in the Lord. And so in other words, he is saying we are to be at all or be at amazed or our eyes so much overcome and delightful as we see uh, a piece of clothing or whatever and you it takes your breath. Oh, how beautiful. How, how beautiful. And so here there is a condition that he gives that he said, I will give you your heart's desire. If you'll delight thyself, if you'll look to the Lord and be delighted in him, delight thyself also in the Lord. And the Bible said that he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. So I began to meditate. I said, now, Lord, I've seen this many times. So if I delight myself, if I look to you at all with all, and I enjoy what I see, and I love what I see about you, and it takes my breath, then you'll give me my heart's desire? Well, you got to look a little bit deeper what he's talking about here. Again, as we read in verses 3, he says, Trust in the Lord and do good, so shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Now, you say, well, I delight myself in the Lord. I mean, I love the Lord. Of course, we use that very, very lightly. I mean, I mean, let Jesus ask you, do you love me? First time it may not do that much. You say, oh, yes, I love you. There's some people who says, you know, I love you, Lord. I go to church every Easter, every Resurrection Sunday. I never miss. I get brand new clothes. I buy my wife a brand new dress. All my children's all, all dressed up. And we get all beautified and we go to church. Yeah, I love you. But let me ask you the second time. Lovest thou me more than these? And as it was with Peter, even the third time. And, and Peter said, Lord, you know I love you. He just took it by, oh God, you know I love you. You know. I, I know I, what I've done wrong, but you know I love you. But then he said, lovest thou me more than these? And that time it grieved the heart of Peter because he asked him three times, lovest thou me? And more than these. Now, through the years, different commentaries or different ones may say, what was he talking about of these? Some feels like they was talking about the fishing. Because they had, Peter said, I go a fishing. And the Bible said that the other says, we'll go with you. Going back to his old ways, his old livelihood. And man, he, he, he's ready to go fishing. And so some said, well, that he might have looked at that Peter. The amount of fish, I forgot what it was, 150 or 250. I forgot, I have to look in. Huh? 153. 153. Exactly. Exactly. And he said, that Jesus had him look at that and say, lovest thou me more than these? Do you love me more than fishing? Yeah. But I don't know for sure if I, I would go along with that. It could have been, but I don't know. Or he could have looked at the other disciples and said, lovest thou me more than these? Do you love me more than you do your disciples? Did you know that Jesus said, if you love not your or hate not your father and mother, your sister, your brother. I mean, the word hate doesn't mean like I hate, 
But in the light, as much as we love the Lord, it's almost like we hate everything else. It could be that the Lord was saying to Peter, Lord, uh, Peter, look around. Do you love this world? <clears throat> love all of this, the trees, the Sea of Galilee? Do you live, love all that more than me? <clears throat> and Peter said, yeah, Lord, I love you. Go feed my sheep. So whatever the reason is, uh, he said that he wanted to know, could I put it this way? Do you delight in me more than this? When you look at me, are you more delightful? Are you more at all at me more than anything else? Because we know that God, our heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know the heart? Someone says, well, if we delight ourselves in the Lord, he'll give us the desires of our heart. I want a million dollars. So if I delight myself in the Lord, I'll get a million dollars. He's not saying that. Man, if I'll delight myself in the Lord, I'll get that Ferrari that I've been always wanting. I saw the day where a man had had a Ferrari for 89 years. It was his first car, and he died. <coughs> And it was 89 years that he had that car. And they showed a picture of it. And I forgot how many, it's over a million miles he had on it. His daddy bought for him for his first car. And it was beautiful. And he, that's the only car he ever had. And, uh, but I was thinking today, you know, if, if we, it, it can't be a wicked thing. It can't be something that God does not want us to have. And that's not what he's talking about. You see, God will give us the desires of our heart. He'll fulfill what we desire in our heart if our desire is a, of, of the Lord. I want you to look with me quickly tonight to the book of Philippians. And notice, if you would, something here, Philippians chapter 2. And we need to understand this, because if we don't understand this, We'll find ourselves, I'll find myself a mumbling and complaining, dissat being dissatisfied. Well, Lord, I thought, you know, I, I really wanted this one. You remember as a child on Christmas, did you ever get a, a, a toy or whatever? And you say, oh, that wasn't the one I wanted. <laughs> that, I wanted something better. I remember the first. 410 shotgun, first gun I ever had, Brother Cecil, was 410. And I'd beg my mom, please get me a, a shotgun for Christmas. Give me a 410 for Christmas. You're not having I was, I don't know, I was a tall, little bit old thing. And she, she was playing clear. You are not getting no shotgun for Christmas. And my blessed grandpa, bless his heart. He told my mama, I didn't know actually afterwards, he said, you get him that, he said, get him that uh, gun and I'm going to take him hunting and I'll show him how to use it and use it and everything and said that you get that boy a 410 shotgun. So I was not expecting it. And I was sick that Christmas. I could, I wasn't able to go outside. If I did, I'd been out there shooting that gun. But anyway, I woke up that morning and looked under the Christmas tree and there was a 410 shotgun. I had never been so tickled in my life. I remember I heard some people coming out of the woods next to our, where our house. It was Ricky Easter and another fella, and they had got a pellet gun set for Christmas. I said, Mama, can I just go out to the back porch? I just want to go to the back porch. I said, Hey, how y'all doing? And they said, We're all good. We're shooting birds and everything. And so we got a pellet gun, one of these pump kinds, you know, all this. Boy, I tell you, I, I, I felt like a king on top on standing at the castle. Oh, yeah. And I didn't think it was nothing like it. But did you know it wasn't long? It wasn't long at all. I wanted something a little bigger. I want to go a level higher. I wanted a 20 gauge. Then I wanted a 12 gauge. Then I wanted a 16 gauge. In other words, what I'm saying is what I thought was Man, this is, I, I, you know, that's all I need. I mean, I thought that 410, that's all I need. I mean, I shot a lot of the birds with that 410 and a few squirrels as well. But we're never satisfied unless it comes from the Lord. Did you know when God does something, he does it forever. It's something eternal. Everything he touches is eternal. 
But in Philippians chapter 2 and verses 13, we could read a lot, but we're not going to, but in verse 13, the Bible said, for, for it is God which worketh in you. Notice this very, very, very careful. For it is God which worketh in you. Notice this word, both. Both. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of what? Whatever you want to do. Does it say that? If your Bible says that, throw it away because you ain't got the right Bible. Amen. For it, it, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of His good pleasure. Amen. Do all things without mummering. God help me. Are disputing that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as light in the world. So what God does, he works out, works through us in both will and both what he wants of us are in us for his good pleasure. In other words, when I say, Lord, if I delight in you, you'll give me the desires of my heart. If I delight in the Lord, the desires of my heart will be the things of God. Right. <laughs> it won't be a new car. It won't be a million dollars in the bank. It won't that I will win the lottery or something stupid, you know, some kind of worldly thing. That's not what God is. But what God is saying, what I have will, both will and will do, you'll have if you'll just delight in me. <clears throat> Notice, if you would, what Paul said in Philippians chapter 1. And I love this verse, verse 6. He said, be in confidence of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Christ. God does not quit in what he starts. Ain't you glad for that? Someone says, you know, you know, I, I, I used to be saved, but. I fell out and everything. If you were saved, God saved you. He worked in your heart. He saved you. He's not going to quit. He'll follow you all the days of your life. We was coming out of Florida last couple of week, couple of weeks ago, I guess it was. And I got a phone call from a brother here. And it's sort of funny, but yet sort of strange. Not a lot of people knew I was leaving, you know, and going into evangelism. Brother Eric, he knew, and I think that's where he found out about it, I think, or somebody told him, or somebody, I don't know how he got it. But this is what he said. This fellow now, at one time, when we first came here, he loved me to death, man. They sang at our tent meetings, and man, a good group, a good couple, a uh, whole family sings, and except the, his wife, but the sons, all what sings. And every tent meeting I had outside of what we had here, they always came and sung for us and everything. But he called, and I saw on the phone who it was, and I thought, wonder why he's calling me. And he said, brother. I said, hey. He said, brother. He said, I heard that you quit. Wow. I said, you heard what? He said, yeah, that you quit. I, I said, no, I've not quit. He said, well, I, told that, I was told that you quit. I said, no, brother. I said, I'm going into evangelism. Oh. It's almost like he was disappointed. He was like, <laughs> I knew it was going to happen. I knew he was going to happen. He was going to... I said, no, I'm not quitting. Far from that. I said, God's farther than I can. And we've done what God's told us to do here. Now he's going to do something else. Oh, okay. Well, brother, we're praying for you. Sure you are. <laughs> if you're listening tonight, I'm not trying to be mean to you, but sure you are. <laughs> but I mean, I thought, where did that come from? Brother. That's what he said, brother, I heard that you quit. No, no, I'm not quit. I, I don't see nowhere I can quit. Now, there was a time that I thought I was going to quit. I thought I had to quit, but I couldn't quit. And because he that began a good work in me, I'm confident. I mean, I am confident that he will finish it. He'll finish the work. You say, well, preacher, you ha you've had so much sickness through the years, and man, you've had three strokes. I had one heart attack and or two heart attacks, and you, you, you think you're gonna live? I don't know. I don't. I listen. 
I can live another 80 years if God wants me to live that way. But I do know this. And I might live another 30 seconds. I don't know. But when God says, I'm finished, I'll be gone. But not until. There's not a devil in hell or in this earth that can kill me or stop me until God is finished. He that has begun a good work will perform it. He will do it. It will get done until the day of Jesus Christ. So this is what he's talking about, delighting yourself in the Lord. If you delight, what is the delight of your heart? What is your, what is your desire that you like to have from the Lord? I tell you, for the last, uh, I'd say at least two to three years, one of my main prayers that I'm asked of God, I've had two main prayers. Number one, Lord, let me know truth. I pray constantly. It stays in my heart constantly. Lord God, let me know truth. Let every man be a liar, but God true. I don't care what anybody else says. I'm not going to follow what someone else says. Show me your truth. I want to know truth. Now, there's a lot of things that sounds good and it, it will it will make people happy and clap and shout or cry or whatever. But it could be traditions of men, not of God. And God's already brought me through that state of my Christian life. I've been through the broken part where I thought, right, Brother Mike, I thought I had, I saw a picture today. Somebody's talking about some, the great men of God of the past that's went on with the Lord. And it was Sammy Allen, uh, Oliver B. Green, uh, Harold Seitler, um, uh, same thing. And I, I, I knew all of these men. I knew everyone that, I, well, I never met, uh, I think it was the name, one that wrote all the books. Uh, but anyway, the rest of them I've met and been with and all. And they were good men. Without a doubt, they were good men. But let me just say that a lot, a lot of times we'll get something going, but we'll listen and we'll follow Traditions of men more than the word of God. I don't know how many knows Brother Craig Edwards, if you're on his Facebook uh, thing, friend, whatever. But here lately, he's been putting a lot of things about worship. And he's talking about how what, we, what men through tradition is calling worship. And the truth of the matter is, it's not worship. It's not really worship. Uh, some people, you know, the Bible says it's not worship always in music. It's not worship in other ways, but we're to worship God in spirit and in what? Truth. You can have music and you may be trying to worship in that music, but if that music is not truth, you can't worship. You can have preaching and good preaching, a good speaker, or somebody tells a lot of good jokes or really knows scriptures and quotes scriptures and all that. But if it's not truth, you can't even worship in preaching. You can only worship God through spirit and in truth. And by the way, you can have truth and not the spirit and still can't worship. You see, they go together. Spirit. And truth. You worship God in spirit and truth. There's some that will worship God all in spirit. Boy, they get all, all excited and they can, I mean, they can walk the aisles and shout and praise God and glorify God and everything. And boy, it's all, but yet, it's all spirit. But you, that, a song could be on, that they're listening to is Build Me a Cabin on the Backside of Heaven. Some of you may have never heard that, but back in the hills where we was from, there's a song. Build me a cap, build me, build me a cabin on the backside of heaven. You wouldn't believe how many churches I've been in. They sung that song and they just shot the place down. God, I'm not asking for a mansion, but build me a cabin on the backside of heaven and I'll be satisfied. Oh, well, that sounds good. But why would I be, why would I, well, I worship on something that's not even scripture? God, I, he ain't going to build me a cabin. 
Right. He told me I'm going to have a mansion. Man. I mean, listen, as far as that goes, I don't have to ask the Lord, Lord, build me a mansion in heaven. He said, I'll do it. Behold, I go away and prepare a place for you. He said, preacher, that means rooms. That means mansions as far as I'm concerned. Man. It's mansions. And so what I'm saying is you can have spirit and not truth and there's no worship. Or you can have truth. Did you know the letter kills, killeth, but the spirit gives life? I've heard people, I've heard preachers stand up and I mean, preach their heart out and give you scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture. But yet they did it all in the flesh and it kills you. Honestly, I have, I've had, I've had, I'd rather, I'd be honest, let me just say this. You've heard me say this before. I'm going to say it again. I'd rather for Caesar to take me outside here in the back behind the building where y'all can't hear me screaming and just beat the living life out of me. I'd whole lot rather for him to do that for me to stand behind the pulpit without the spirit of God on me. It kills me. Lord God in heaven, it kills me. I've got to have the Spirit of God. And I know the difference, and you know the difference. Everybody knows the difference if you're anointed or not. Now, there's some that don't like it when you're anointed, and some don't even, maybe not even realize that you're anointed, and they get anointed over your anointing, and <laughs> that's okay. But when you stand behind the pulpit, I have a delight, I have a desire that God will anoint me. So I want truth. And I'm asking God, Lord, as you show me new things and what I was going to say earlier, before God just broke me down, I had everything in line. Caesar, I thought I had it all in line. I mean, buddy, I, I studied and, and preached and was preaching sometimes week after week after week after week every single night. And man, and then I realized that in my heart, I was getting prideful or Felt like I knew something when I really didn't know nothing. If any man think he, he knows something, then he's deceived. He don't know anything. But I thought I knew something. And you couldn't change me with a bulldozer. I mean, you couldn't. I mean, there's some things I believe in. <clears throat> you know, I, I, I take one verse of scripture, and maybe that's the only verse of scripture I had to prove what I was thinking or what I believed. But I thought, man, I'm right. Because. Brother Seidler preached on that. It's got to be right. I mean, uh, you know, you, you got to be careful. Man's tradition. Man, this looks like Easter. We're talking about the resurrection, you know. I mean, the, America will celebrate what, what we'll celebrate, and they'll call it Easter, and they'll celebrate it. And as we was talking about Friday, it's no way possible that Jesus was crucified on Friday. You know where that came from? The Catholics. They started that. And I don't know if you can, you can, yeah, pagan. And, and I tell you what, you can have your Easter eggs if you want it. And I didn't see no bunnies coming out of the grave. I never did either. And I, you know, I'm not looking for eggs. I'm looking for the Lord to come. And, and, and there's some churches and I'm not here trying to be mean or blaspheme, but you know, that's what they was that's what they're going to get a lot of their crowd in for Easter. And this is what has really got me, I mean, unbelievable. It just shocks me. There's a church and there's several churches. There's one mega church, and this is what they said. They said we're not going to bring up this Easter Sunday, he calls it. Anything about Calvary, we're not going to talk about the blood. We're not going to talk about the crucifixion because it offends people and we don't want to offend them. We want them to be happy when they come to church. So we're not going to talk about those things. Yeah, sound like Joe Olstein and several others. But I, I'm saying, don't, don't, don't say anything about the blood. But dear friends, if you take the blood out of this book, this book is not alive. You take the blood out of me, I'm dead. And you take the blood out of this book, it won't. It's no life in it whatsoever. And you take away the crucifixion and your resurrection. I mean, what do you have left? 
There is no salvation. It's through the death and burial and the resurrection. And that I listen, the gospel is the power and the salvation to them that believe even the day that we live in and nothing else, nothing else, nothing else. So you can have your Easter eggs. You can have your bunny rabbits. You can have somebody rock, hop down the aisles and, and give a little candy to the children and get a big crowd to come and say, boy, we had a great service. Man, we had the biggest crowd we ever had. We gave out, I don't know, I don't, we probably gave out 2,000 baskets of food, of, of candy and chocolate, and it's killing them anyway doing that, and all this pores. We fed the children all this pores and stuff, and and we even had a but Did you know I know a, oh, no, a preacher? And I've mentioned, I probably I've mentioned this. Everything I say I've mentioned before at one time or another, but I know of a preacher personally that he took a church and he, he was only there not quite a year. It came up to Christmas time and they always had Santa Claus. Somebody dress up like Santa Claus on their, on Christmas, either before, right before Christmas or right at Christmas. And he would come into the church and give out candies, candy to the children. And this preacher said, no, no, we're not going to have no Santa Claus here at this church. And the deacons, they all got together and said, we can't have this preacher. We, we, we've always had Santa Claus. Santa Claus has always come to this church. One of the men that played Santa Claus, he said, I've played Santa Claus for years. We can't stop that. And did you know they kicked the preacher out because he wouldn't let Santa Claus in? As far as I'm concerned, they could kick me out. If they want Santa Claus, they want to choose Santa Claus over the Lord, that's fine. But I say it's fine, but it's not right. And so delight thyself in the, thyself in the, also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. And then I'll close with this. Commit thy way. There it is. If you won't have the right desires, if you want God to do it, delight yourself in him, and he'll give you the desires of your, of your heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall. Now, your word may not say shall in your, what Bible you're using. But how many knows what shall means? I ain't talking about a service station. That means it will. He, he says, also in him, and he shall. It will come. He shall bring it to pass. Thank God in heaven. I need to stop. I'm, I'm confessing myself. I need to stop worrying, fretting, when I know that if I'll delight myself, it'll give me the desires of my heart. It will happen. It will happen. It will happen. You say, preach it might not. It will happen. God said plainly, the Bible says plainly, it will he will bring it to pass. Paul said plainly, I I have confidence he that begun a good work and the work is to do the will of God. The work is to do what pleases him, that makes him joyful, that makes him honor, it honors him and nothing else. Amen. Amen. Nothing else. Whatever you do, if you're not doing it for the glory of God, then you're not doing it right. Pure. That's it. Amen. If it's not for his glory and his glory alone and Listen, folks, I'm, I'm not, I don't care. I don't care. I don't really, I honestly, I don't care. God is my witness. I don't care if the only churches I preach at has 10 to 15 or 20 people in the church. That don't not bother me. If that's where God wants me to be to help those people, that's where I want to be. Thanks. I mean, I have preached to thousands. I preached to 3,000 one time, 3,000, and, and also was on three radio stations live that night when I preached. And there was 2,000, there was 2,000, I believe it was, and they said that that's what it was, 2,000. Brother Bobby Ross from the Gospel Light. Oh, yeah. And man, the next day I was having people come, man, I heard you preaching the Gospel Light last night on the radio. Man, that was big. That was big. Yeah. I wasn't a young punk anyway and and preach there but that, it, that, that don't bother me I don't care if it's 10 or 10,000 if God is getting the honor and if he's getting the glory that's all that matters 
Everything else is vain. Can I just remind you real quickly that every one of us sitting here tonight, everyone that goes down up and down this road and has been up down this road for the last hundred years, everybody, we're all going to a judgment. Right. You're not going to escape it. Amen. We're going to a judgment. It's appointed and the man wants to die. And then what's that? After that, the judgment. Now that we know there's two judgments, thank God we don't have to go, to, if you're saved, you don't have to go to the great white throne judgment. But the Christians will go to the beam of Christ, to the judgment that for the Christians to be judged for what they have done, whether it be good or bad. And it'll be tried by fire. His eyes is as fire. It'll be tried by fire. And some will be, it will be hay, stubble, Hay, wood, and stubble. Now, you know as good as I know, if you put fire to hay, <laughs> you put fire to wood, it may not go as quick as the hay. Stubble, it's going to burn up. And silver and gold. If it's silver and gold, you can burn gold as hot as you want to, hotter the better. And the only thing it does is purify it more and more and more. It makes it more gold. It takes more of the junk, yeah, the growth, growth out of it. And the silver the same way. But I wonder how much when we stand before God that we'll see go up smoke. I'll be honest with you. I'm looking for the Lord to come. I'm ready for him to come. Sometimes I, I pray desperately, Lord, God, would you please come now? Come now. Oh, come now, Lord Jesus. But I'll be honest with you. I'm not really looking forward for the judgment because I believe a lot of stuff through the years that I thought I was doing for the glory of God is going to burn right up. Why? Because when we go enter into heaven, we're going to be pure. All the gro gross, 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 whatever it is, the filth, that which is not right, and everything we've done for the glory of ourselves or for anybody else and not for the glory of God, it'll just burn right up. The will, what God does is both the will and do of his what? Good pleasure. That's it. Everything we do is to please him. And you say, well, God began a good work in my heart. Will you finish it? Yes. If it's God and if it's glorifying him, he'll finish it. But it'll be for his glory and for his praise and honor. Aren't you glad for that? Amen. So thank God. That's my, that's my message for tonight. Let's stand to our feet. Say hallelujah, preacher. You didn't preach. Hey, don't call me a long preacher, long Brother, preacher. I'll say something before we leave before because this, this will be the last time I get to see you. I want you both to know at the bottom of my soul, I come here almost dead spiritually speaking. I come here in a bad way. And you thought I was a blessing to you. He was way the other way around. I want you to know more than you ever know, you and Wendy both. You guys hold me and literally built me up where I feel God's presence in my soul, where I hadn't felt it in a long time. I'm, I'm telling you the truth. I just want to say thank you. I may never give a chance to tell you again, but I love both of you. And I did tell Eric about that you was leaving. I tell him you quit, but yeah. he probably told somebody else to quit. But I didn't say that. But well, I we had we literally in a bad way in my life, spiritually, emotionally. I stayed on this whole altar. And listen to you preach, and I mean, it was hard preaching, and really sometimes it was tough on me. But I, God knows I needed it. And I did listen to you online, 
just by the way this whole show I did I didn't I didn't come but uh but but I'm I'm gonna be a helping you. Don't don't worry, I'm I might be gonna be gone, but and I'll always hopefully you'll always be my friends, both of you. Oh Lord, brother. And you've uh I just want to say thank you. God bless you and God speed on you. God's blessing to sell you place and to get you place and to establish you and to where you could be. You got so much to tell. And you got so much good things to tell what God's done for you. And you got a great testimony more than anybody that I know. I mean, you got a greater testimony than Greg Luck got. But literally, because God brought you from death two or three different times. And and I my hats and my heart and my prayers is for you both. But just let go and let God use you. Hope you go around and get some old people like me to beat up preachers that maybe needs an uplift. You really gave me something that that's uh that I need. Well and I appreciate it. Brother, you didn't know this, but I go ahead and let you know it. If we do get a camper, well, you're gonna to have to tag. You'll be in the camp. We're we'll, we'll, gonna take. We're gonna take you everywhere you go. Because you said that I've been a blessing to you, and I'm glad I have. Thank God for that. But don't don't think that you haven't been a blessing to me. And uh, I appreciate you. I really do. I've known Brother Mike for over forty years. Yeah, over forty years, and. Uh, and he's been my friend. And I, I appreciate that. I've not had, if you can, if you can, that's what friends you really have. You're blessed. If you only have two really good, true friends, and a friend is one that will stick with you. I like what one said, and I'll shut up. But he, as one said, a, a true friend is when everybody else walks out, they're standing right there with you. That's the truth. And you don't have many people like that, Caesar. And you'll find that out as pastor. We Lord see it a God. different way in my world. But yeah. yeah. Well, I tell you, I mean, it's, it's amazing, but uh, are we off there, Wendy? Get us off. Thank you for joining us. Join us Sunday. Okay. I'm not going to say a lot, but there was a time 